action between Rogelio Porky Medina and Jonathan Gonzalez. And there is Medina. Checked in at 165.8. He thought it was contracted at 168, only to find out it was 163. So they let him go there at 165.8. 32 and 5, just his second fight outside of Mexico. TKO'd in his other visit to the U.S. in Shelton, Washington. He's lost three of his last four. Jonathan Gonzalez, the 24-year-old, 5'11", 162.8, from Puerto Rico, 17-0-1, with 14 knockouts, was an amateur star as an Olympian for Puerto Rico, started his pro career with 13 straight knockout wins, does have a couple of step-up wins against Cisneros, Gutierrez, had that disappointing effort and lack of professional preparation in his draw against Sergei Zinzurek. Time to see what the fighters need to do to look like a champ brought to you by Just For Men. Well, let's start off with the man trying to pull off an upset. Medina, be aggressive and attack downstairs to his body. And for Gonzalez to stay undefeated, use your jab to dominate the outside and then finish with the right hand. Sambergos, the referee, is they're scheduled for 10. Gentlemen, we get the instructions in the back. What is it? You want to send it to Remember, obey my command and protect yourself at all times. Obey this and he's a protege in todo momento. Alguna pregunta? Alguna pregunta? Any question? All right, touch him up. Let's go to the back. A lack of preparation professionalism, I referenced back in September 2012, the draw against in Zurich. Gonzalez came in at 163 pounds for a 154 pound fight. Oh, he's not doing great here. I mean, Gonzalez. This is his third highest weight of his career, but he does have a guy in front of him in Medina who hasn't been doing too well lately. Medina, three of his five losses by knockout. He's lost three of his last five fights. So Gonzalez's people feel that they have Medina on the right side mentally maybe physically of his career, or maybe the wrong side for Medina. Medina trying to split that guard early on here. All but one of Medina's 37 fights, Joe, in Mexico. That one fight, if you were wondering, that was outside of Mexico, was here in the United States, he was knocked out. So that's what Gonzalez and people are looking for tonight. That was against my dude Jack back in December of 2013. <laughs> You know, you touched on it before we started throwing punches here. And I'll follow up a little bit. You asked the question, really. And I think it's a question that boxing people would ask. Does Gonzalez belong at middleweight, super middleweight, or should he really be a junior middleweight if he trained right? I mean, I just look at his torso right now, and you tell me that couldn't be tighter? I think he belongs in junior middleweight, but we'll find out. Maybe he'll find out the hard way. Medina's been scoring here as he does again with an uppercut, but Gonzalez seemingly unaffected as he continues to get to the inside. And again, if you're a back of Medina, you have to worry about his chin. How good is it? Three of his five losses, as I said early, he's been knocked out. Medina's been penalized for low blows. There's a left hook by Gonzalez. Not a bad idea for Medina to bang downstairs to that body of Gonzalez. You said it. Looks soft. Our fans can see it. He's got a little Pillsbury in him, Gonzalez. Good As work it, by Medina there, Teddy. Yeah. And you let Medina get in there with an undefeated kid with his experience. An undefeated kid that suddenly doesn't look so great, so special. Well, the confidence of an experienced Medina with those 37 fights can start to show. Clean left hook by Medina moments ago, scoring well against Gonzalez. We're going to put pen to paper in about 20 seconds and score this first round. We invite you to go to the Friday Night Fight Facebook page and put fingers to keyboard as Gonzalez. An exchange here at the end of round number one. Busy pace set early on here in this Thursday edition of Friday Night Fights as we go to the Friday Night Fight studio and say good evening to Tom Risha.
Good evening, Joe. What a start to the broadcast. Great round one down there in South Florida. As for us here in the studio, coming up, we've got highlights from what many are calling the fight of the year so far, an epic slugfest between John Molina Jr. and Lucas Matisse, plus a look at Vladimir Klitschko's dominating performance. Next weekend, we will broadcast to you the heavyweight battle for the one title that Vladimir doesn't have as Bermain Stavern and Chris Ariola meet up again. Coming up, Teddy Atlas goes one-on-one -on -one with Ariola as he looks to become the first heavyweight champion of Mexican descent. Plus, we'll get you ready for a star-studded fight card this weekend, headlined by Floyd Mayweather and Marcos Maidana, the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas. Make sure you join the Friday Night Fight Conversation by reaching out to me on Twitter at Grisham ESPN and to our social media contributor, Nigel Collins, at ESPN FNF. We also encourage you to log on to our Friday Night Fights Facebook page and score tonight's action using our scoring app. And there was plenty of action in round one. Can't wait for round two. Back down to Joe and Teddy. Thank you, Todd. As Todd mentioned, we will have the WBC heavyweight title fight Saturday, May 10th, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Chris Ariola, Berman Stavern. I do encourage everybody to stick around and listen to Teddy's conversation with Chris Ariola. Fascinating and reflective. Chris Ariola really opening up to Teddy Atlas about the past year of his life and where he stands heading into his chance for a piece of the heavyweight championship. Round number two here, round number one. Porky Medina threw two times as many punches as Jonathan Gonzalez. There are the CompuBox tallies, as you see. Gonzalez, even though we're talking about his weight, the funny thing here, we're talking about his weight for a very definitive reason. We think he should be smaller. He has been a much smaller man than Medina. Gonzalez turned pro 145, Joe. That's why I think he should be lighter than what he is at 162.8. Almost half his fights in welterweight. The others at junior middleweight. He moved up to 165 super middleweight in his last fight. Now he's right around there, a little above middleweight. Well, Medina turned pro at 161. Most of Medina's career at middleweight with some super middleweight sprinkled in there. So the bigger guy in this fight, Medina, Maybe that's why he was able to handle some of those shots that sometimes he hasn't handled early in his first round or in the last round, which was the first round. There's a right hand, that right flank got around the back of Gonzalez as he turns towards the right when that punch was thrown. And that time Medina opened up and almost got caught. Again, back to the body. Go up top, try to get the arms to raise a little bit. Medina's trying to do the old Mickey Ward. Go upstairs, then go downstairs and catch Gonzalez open. And again, I said in the last round, Gonzalez has a little Pillsbury in him, as in Doughboy. Few that were better of targeting that left hook than Mickey Ward when he would finish a three or four punch combination. You know, a lot of people thought Gonzalez was going to have his way. I got to tell you, it's early. It's only the second round, but I haven't been impressed by Gonzalez so far in his career. Now, things might change tonight. He was a 2008 Olympic representative from Puerto Rico. So he's got the pedigree. He's got the amateur background. But what I am impressed with is he also has John David Jackson now only in his second fight, training him in the corner. Maybe John David Jackson develops him and improves Gonzalez to where maybe I will be impressed. <laughs> Gonzalez doesn't land because Medina rolls with it. But the left hook to the body, that does land. The head moves, but the body does not move. And that's why it's always a good idea to finish downstairs. Gonzalez doing a pretty good job right there. It is 17-0-1 Jonathan Gonzalez in the blue and white trunks who was training to fight in the Friday night fight February 7th main event against Roberto Gonzalez. He was injured. Roberto Garcia would end up taking that fight win and now it's Garcia who headlines tonight's show in the main event coming up later against Victor Cayo. You want to hear an interesting theory here? Yes. Because boxing is theater and we might be seeing a little theater here especially if Medina to grab some more rounds. I thought he grabbed the last round and maybe start marching towards a possible upset of the undefeated former Olympian Gonzalez. 
You know, Medina came in 166 pounds for a fight that he agreed for weight was 163. But he said he had been cutting weight all day. That was yesterday when the weigh-in was. And he couldn't lose any more. And the doctor agreed. So 20% of his purse will go to his opponent, to Gonzalez. But if he lied, and we all lie, and fighters lie, <laughs> if he lied and he had not cut weight all day, then he got what he wanted, a chance to come in heavy and have a strength advantage over the smaller Gonzalez and absorb punches that he normally doesn't have the capability of absorbing. And then it's worth the 20%. Yes, it is. For the win, the career advancement, and Han Gonzalez, his first loss. And so far, he's standing up well to him early on here. Scheduled for 10. He's returned fire with Gonzalez. And there is John David Jackson, the titleist, who has guided the career of so many South Florida fighters and world-class fighters in recent years. He's been working now with Jonathan Gonzalez. See, I've been concentrating on the jab right now because there's a lot of gaps of separation here. When they get inside, it's pretty self evident You gotta work. You gotta move those hands. But on the outside, trying to get inside. Or if you're the boxer like Gonzalez right now, trying to keep separation. The jab is imperative. Whoever uses that jab on the outside, for me, and they're gonna grab some of these rounds that are not that easy to separate with. Right now, Gonzalez, why should you say Medina using that jab? Sweeping left hand again from the Mexican, Porky Medina. I think the guy that should maybe grab the nickname Porky might have to be Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. End of three. Interesting opening bout. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas with you outdoors. Thursday edition of Friday Night Fights from beautiful Hialeah Park, which is where they filmed the movie Let It Ride with Richard Dreyfus. And right now, it's Porky Medina who is uh, putting it on the line, letting it ride against Jonathan Gonzalez here in round number four. I'm going to call him instead of Porky Medina, I'm going to start calling him Cuffing. Medina because he cuffs with the left hook. He doesn't turn it over. If he turned it over, he'd be doing some damage with I some agree. of those that have been thrown tonight and actually landed. I'm sure our camera guys are going to hear what I said and they're going to jump on it and they're going to show you. But when you get a chance, you take a look at those left hooks that Medina's throwing. And again, he's cuffing. He's hitting with the wrong part of the glove with his heel. He's not, again, there it was. It was the heel of the glove not turning it over to really hit the right part of the glove with the fist of the glove and and as you pointed out because it happens so fast but you pointed out a few times through the years of sitting by you is you can actually watch the forearm and the elbow to see when it's done properly because it should be parallel with the canvas with the ring you should see that forearm come flat there and really turn over and get that fist going absolutely and that right hand that time Medina didn't really ride with it real well, but maybe most importantly to my point earlier Medina's absorbing but again He's been knocked out three times But he's absorbing punches much better. Is it the size advantage? Did they make a move yesterday a plan move to come in heavier and have an advantage a chance as you said Maybe give up 20% of their purse lose here, but win later Teddy has it two rounds to one for Medina. Of course, you can go on the Friday Night Fight Facebook page. Fans at home like Medina, three rounds to zip. So far in the career of Medina, reason why Gonzalez's people put him here as an opponent is that Medina loses every time he steps up to the next level, Joe. But here's the question. What level is Gonzalez? If Gonzalez is the next level, well, he's supposed to win. If he's not the next level, well, that's where upsets are born. Garcia and Cayo coming up in our main event. Could be a good one there. Of course, come Saturday, May 10th, we'll have a good one in the heavyweight division with the WBC title on the line between Chris Ariola and Berman Stavrano. Looks Stavera. to me like Medina's starting to slow down a little bit. 
this round. I just see something in his body like we're just slowing down a little bit. I wonder more importantly if Gonzalez and his people see that. And the four. Well, I asked for a picture of the cuffing by Medina. You ask, you get over here. And there it is right there. That's not the way to throw a left hook. That's a slap. That's a cuff. As you said, Joe, that punch should turn over with a fist. The meaty part of their hand, the knuckles, a landing, not the wrist. It's going to be an interesting round to see how Medina looks because, to your point, he was slowing in the back half of that fourth round. He kept up a very good pace the first three rounds, was matching Gonzalez punch for punch, was setting the tone of this fight. We'll see how he reacts here. Scheduled for 10. And now the inside work from Gonzalez, the unbeaten fighter at 17-0-1. I think that if Gonzalez, simply put, for me anyway, if he wants to be considered a real prospect, and I don't consider him that yet, his people do, and I'm ready to open up my eyes, but you gotta show me something. If Gonzalez wants to be considered that kind of prospect and a future contender, I think he not only needs to win this, that's obvious, I think he needs to, probably from this point on, start to dominate. He very much views himself that way. When we sat with him yesterday, he said, I'm close to a title fight, and I'm going to take advantage of where I am in my career. Well, if he believes that, then he dismisses a guy like Porky Medina. Reminder, NBA playoff action will continue Friday on ESPN and ESPN2. We've got game sixes all over the place, 8 o'clock on ESPN. Spurs Mavericks, Spurs leading that three games to two. 10.30, Rockets, Trailblazers, and ESPN2 will have Raptors Nets to see who ends up playing the hometown heat down here in South Florida who swept Charlotte away. You know, I think I was right, Joe. I think Medina slowed down. No doubt. But there's one problem. Gonzalez seems to have slowed down right along with him. It's a right hand to the body from Medina. Both men opening up that time. Now inside work from Gonzalez, and Medina tries to rally back. Not much on that left hook at all. Both guys are coming close to banging nuggins, heads, on the inside. Something that the referee, when he gets a chance, has to say, hey, watch your head a little bit. Got a couple big exchanges on moments of separation here in round five. Although this referee's done a good job. When you don't see a referee and everything is going along accordingly, usually refs are doing a good job. Not the first I time. I can't we've... stand those refs that want to make themselves a part of the fight. It, not the first time we've said that about Sam Burgos. We also have Telus Asaminos working the main event tonight. Two guys that are reliable down here in South Florida. Coming to the halfway point of a good-looking co-feature here on Friday Night Fights, brought to you by Corona. Bang. Turn it over. Let the elbow come to the same height as the shoulder so you get the power behind it. And turn the fist where it lands this way. Lands this way, guess what? It hurts a lot more. It's Porky Medina, Teddy referencing here as we start round six. And the black trunks with the blue trim has been putting forth a spirited effort, especially early on in the first three rounds against the unbeaten Former Puerto Rican Olympian 17-0-1 Jonathan Gonzalez. Medina has lost three of his last five. He's been TKO'd in three of his five losses. Just his second fight outside of Mexico. And then you can see, well, we just gave you hopefully a, something to, to trace it, to track it a little bit on the left hooks with that illustration. And just as I get back to my chair, I see Medina again cuffing with that left hook, not turning it over, losing all the impact, or a lot of the impact. A lot of the value of the punch. You want value in your punches. Why? Well, it's obvious. You want to hurt the guy. You want to slow the guy down. That's what you're trying to do. But you never know how many opportunities you're going to get to land a good punch. So when you get them, make them good. You know, I said it earlier, Joe, two rounds ago, Medina looked like he was slowing down. Maybe Petro was getting a little low. But 
Gonzalez, instead of speeding it up, he slowed down right with him. Medina's right in his fight. And here I think he's actually working fairly well considering what Gonzalez isn't doing. Well, he's getting a second win. Yep. And maybe more than just a second physical win, maybe a second psychological win because Gonzalez did not jump on him when he was tired. And then he lands the two-punch combination. Wide swinging with the right hand, but Medina didn't make him pay the price. Yeah, left took in there though by Medina, but again, not paying the price, not turning it over, and making it a really solid punch. There's Victor Cayo getting ready for the main event against Roberto Garcia, the longtime contender at 140 pounds, now fighting at 147. He says he feels stronger, and it'll show in the fight tonight. That's our main event. You know, this fight's in the trenches right here, and you're seeing a lot of left hooks from both sides, downstairs and upstairs. I'm looking for uppercuts. If somebody would make a transition to an uppercut, both guys, there's an uppercut. Both guys are vulnerable to it. Why? Well, they're leaving a little bit. They're also vulnerable to that left hook, again, as Gonzalez lands. That snap back, and here comes Medina firing back. Medina's starting to look for that uppercut a little bit on the inside. The reason both guys get caught with left hooks every once in a while, they both have the tendency of pulling straight back, standing tall right in front of their man. By Jonathan Gonzalez. Yeah, you see the right hand here. Medina does roll with it a little bit, but the jab, no rolling there. He takes it square on. Right down the alley it came. They have four rounds to go here outdoors in South Florida's Hialeah Park. This might not be a bad idea, especially for Medina, who I got him fall behind a little bit in this fight now, to start to separate himself. Nobody has separated themselves on the outside here. It's been mostly in the trenches. Might not be a bad spot for Medina to separate himself, try to get that jab working. You can see Medina's not doing that. Even though he's pushing it, he's only pushing it out there. He's looking to set up a power punch as he misses. See the CompuBox punch stats where Gonzalez had more total punches landed in the last round, 25 to 24. That's the first round in which Gonzalez has landed more than Porky Medina. Again, both guys land left hooks in these rounds. And both guys give the other guy an opportunity to land the left hook. Two reasons. One, they get a little fat with the punch. And while you're throwing a wide punch, if the other guy's punch is a little shorter, he's going to get there, and he's going to catch you while you're in transition, while you are throwing your left hook. And both of them get caught that way tonight. Also, as I said last round, both of them stand up straight, right in that pocket, right in that, that zone where you can't stand up straight, that punching zone. And there's a little bit of standing up straight for Gonzalez, or I should say Medina, as Gonzalez finishes off that combination. Now hands down at his hips, giving a look at trying to draw him in as he throws off that left hand from the hip. Yeah, Gonzalez trying to show a little versatility. Because if he's going to move up the boxing ladder, ladder he's got to do more than just outfight guys on the inside because this guy's a lot better than Medina that he's going to have to outfight on the inside. And I don't think he's going to be able to do it with everybody. So he's going to have to show another dimension. See, so here's the inside again. Now, I think the uppercut can be productive in there because both guys are a little lean. A little bit of a lean in there. Short right hand on the inside from Medina. Some blood coming from the mouth of Gonzalez and a stiff jab as well. Better round for Medina. There's a short uppercut on the inside as Gonzalez has been spitting some blood here in the seventh round. That, I'm seeing that uppercut really find the home for Medina. I was looking for it about three rounds ago, but better late than never if you're back of Medina. Not a bad round for Medina, a comeback round. A round that he needed. Good final minute as well for round number seven. The interesting co-feature to get the night started. At 8 o'clock Eastern, Teddy and I will be ringside from USC's 
Gallon Center for the green belt. The belt that Vitaly Klitschko vacated and now Areola and Stavern, their rematch. Stavern got the best of them last spring. But Areola looks like a completely different fighter as you will find out when you watch Teddy's visit with Chris Areola coming up later on this Thursday edition of Friday Night Fights. Because I'm not looking at Matt Gonzalez, but let me ask you a question. Does he look like a number seven and a number nine rated fighter right now? No, not at all. No, he's in the top ten at 154 pounds. This is a version of him at 162. But even if he shed the weight, he just doesn't look the part of a fighter that's ready to contend at the elite class for a world title. I would agree. He doesn't look completely evolved and finished. And to my point, the IBF has him number seven. WBC has him number nine. The only rankings that I trust, quite honestly, is the transnational rankings. And where is he there? Not rated. There you go. Sixty-seven, sixty-six. Gonzalez says, "Teddy, a fight that could go either way." Facebook fans have it five to two. They like the upset bid by Medina here. I tell you one place Gonzalez is rated though, the people behind him. He's got Louis the Cubans, one of the best in the business at moving his fighters, looking out for his fighters. So in that way, he's in business. Ring magazine doesn't have him anywhere in the top ten, nor does ESPN.com. To my point. See again, hand landing right hands. Perfect example a moment ago. Medina threw some shots downstairs and then Ada left took from Gonzalez. Why? Because he's taking pictures after he punches. The basic fundamental teaching of moving after your last punch, not showing with Medina right now. That's all you gotta do. You finish up your last punch when you throw one, two, three, or four. You must move your head if you're in close. You must not stand there and take a picture. Medina too often simply stands there at this last punch, poses a little bit, admires the work, yeah. whatever you want to call it, and he's there to get caught on the back end by Gonzalez. Throws that combination and thinks about it. Takes it all in. And you gotta have a habit of automatically moving again, standing straight up, Medina eating some big leather. Good right hand thrown by Jonathan. Again, I ask my truck delivers. Look at the punch by Medina. No problem. Here's the problem. Stands there after his last punch, and he eats a left hook from Gonzalez. After that last punch, Joe, not only do you have to cover with your hands, you have to move your head. You know, pretty simple idea. Like Custom Auto used to say to me, Teddy Atlas, if you don't teach your guy to move his head after his punches, guess what? The other guy will move it for you. That's right. You don't want that. But there have been a few things you've pointed out tonight that are just basic fundamentals and technique. And this is a fighter at 25 years old that is 37 fights into his career. Sometimes guys never learn the basics. They just go forward on experience, on guts. You know, it's just on natural progression from being in the rings, trial and error, and being tough. But there's a reason why Medina has five losses. There's a reason why he doesn't win at the next level, as I said about five rounds ago. And that's part of the reason. There's a lead right from Medina. Now he goes to the body with a right hand as well. So he puts forth a spirited charge here a minute in to round nine. So that's that uppercut from Medina. It's there. It's hot in this ring, human in this ring. Very important for the cornermen, not only to do their job with their mouths, with their minds, to give strategy, to give adjustments to their fighters, but also to give nutriment, to give refreshment, to give life in a corner, to cool them down, hit them with a cold sponge, bring their temperature down, give them cold water, give them water, maybe give them a little Gatorade. Give them something to replace those electrolytes, to replace, to rehydrate what is being lost in that hot ring. 
outdoor fight in South Florida. We're in Miami at Hialeah Park, right down near the rail of the famed racetrack. Victor Cayo, who's coming up in our main event, went so far as to bring that up. He was thinking about that, saying it's his first fight outdoors. No, he's right. You have to respect the environment. You have to understand that that becomes part of the fight. You're fighting in a hot place. You better be prepared to cool your man down a little bit, simply put. See the work rate there on the bottom of your screen. Over 100 punches thrown in four of the first five rounds by Medina. CompuBox has him without any since any of those rounds logged of hitting the century mark. So the work rate clearly slowed right in the middle of this fight. The Irish fighter, Barry McGuigan, you might remember him. Sure. Another way champ years ago. He lost the fight because of environment, because his people were not prepared in Las Vegas to get Stephen Cruz, the big underdog. He just got melted by the sun. We will have one round to go here from Miami. Stay with us. Tenth and final round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside as Jonathan Gonzalez, Puerto Rican Olympian, tries to stay unbeaten. 17-0-1 here, taking on Mexican Corky Medina, his second fight in the U.S. separation the jab starts it all and then the uppercut starts him back with Medina both guys landing good combinations Medina got the best of it with that finishing uppercut there now back to the jab see again if they need this round the separation right now that jab will go a long way to setting up the winner setting up the round You know, I'm thinking, I don't know what you're ring. thinking, what I'm thinking, Joe, but I'm thinking Medina did take a calculated risk on coming in heavier. He was, he was bigger, he was able to handle the punches better, and now he's hoping that he's close enough to pull off really what he did it for, what he gave up that 20 cent in his first for, to pull off the upset. Just ate a left hook, but he continues to fire off, looking for that upset against the unbeaten Gonzalez. See if he works here with some separation. Now they go back shoulder to shoulder, head to head. And if I'm Medina on the inside, I'm looking for that uppercut. And I'm not standing straight up. You know, after I finish my last punch, a little move. Uppercut inside for both guys. Let's see if somebody's sitting on one here. The one making the little adjustments on the inside, I must say, is a little bit, little subtle adjustments. A moment ago was Gonzalez. Going downstairs, going upstairs, then he goes upstairs, sneaks something upstairs. And earlier, he was taking little steps back to create a little room, as he's doing right now, as Medina leans. Final half minute. Those legs could be important inside. Most people wouldn't think so. But when you're inside, a guy's leaning on you, you take a little step back, you make him fall forward, you get a free shot. And that's exactly what Gonzalez looked for right there. You see if they let it go right to the bell. Good effort throughout. Porky Medina, Jonathan Gonzalez from Hialeah Park. Nice crowd on hand, and we will hear from the judges when we return to a Thursday edition of Friday Night Fights. Now home to Friday Night Fights. We are 10 rounds through as Porky Medina and Jonathan Gonzalez went the distance. Teddy has it a draw, 95-95. Facebook had it favoring Medina, who threw over 1,000 punches, but it was Gonzalez, according to CompuBox, that had the higher percentage of connected punches. Gonzalez trying to stay unbeaten. Which way did it go? We head up to the ring to Thomas Triver. 
Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing, we go to the judges' scorecards, and we have a split decision. Judge William Ray scores it 96 to 94 in favor of Medina. Judge Michael Ross scores it 97 to 93 in favor of Gonzalez. And Judge Richard Green scores it 96 to 94 in favor of your winner and still undefeated Jonathan Montequilla Gonzalez. So Gonzalez just gets by a split decision to go to 18 0 and 1. The dissenting judge had it 96 94. That was Billy Ray who favored Medina. The other scores for Gonzalez 97 93, 96 94. Once again, CompuBox noting the early work by Medina. He threw over a thousand total punches, but Gonzalez, the better percentage landed. Our main event will be coming up. Victor Cayo taking on a man who's already had success this year on Friday Night Fights. Roberto.